on Instagram. So tonight we're going to be chatting about oils for babies and kids. It's a really popular topic because, you know, I think as mamas, we don't want to mess up, right? We don't want to, like, we have these amazing babies. We don't really want to screw up and use things we shouldn't use or or use too much of something or whatever, right? We just want that confidence to know that what we are doing for our kiddos is the best thing. And so I'm here to tell you as a mama of seven that oils, using your oils on your babies is a totally legitimate thing. It is safe, it is okay. And we're gonna talk about that foundation tonight. So first thing is you do need to know, like I have seven kids, I've been doing this whole mom gig for about 16 and a half years. So we did not start using natural solutions with our family until uh, 2012. Yeah, 2012. So we had a baby in December of 2011, baby number five. And that is kind of when things shifted for us. It was a kind of slow shift between baby four and five. Um, around baby four, uh, that was my first non-medicated childbirth uh, with baby number four. And soon after that, we got into, we learned about an autism diagnosis around that time. We um, were starting to really learn about how food affected our kids. We kind of had our eyes opened to, um, you know, just the quality of food, sugar, dyes, processed stuff, how that was affecting our kiddos. I had a gallbladder attack that had us like kind of take a look at some things and really clean up, um, you know, back then our version of clean up, our diet was, you know, getting organic apple juice instead of <laughs> the cheap stuff. But we were taking our baby steps. Let's just say that around baby four is when we took those baby steps. But after baby five was born, uh, you know, I had a home birth with him. We really were, I mean, we were making those, those bigger baby steps. Maybe I should say that they were tiny baby steps before. And we would, we would make a few steps and then we would go back a few and then we'd make a few steps and go back a few. And it was a, it was not an easy transition for us, but we got to, um, baby five and that, that home birth. And, you know, our perspective shifted a lot in that year of life in 2012. And so, like I said, we'd had a diagnosis. I was really looking for solutions. And so since that time for the past 10 years, we have every day taken more and more steps toward healing, more and more steps toward a holistic lifestyle, a natural lifestyle every day. And we're still growing and we're still improving and we're still doing better every single day, right? It's not perfect and it's never going to be, uh, I don't know that I'll ever be like, I've made it. I've arrived as a crunchy mom. There's always going to be something that I'm like, I think we could tighten this up a bit. I think we could do better. And I love that. I love the fact that, you know, it's never it's ever done. It, you're, we're always growing. We're always learning and we're always improving. Um, I love that. So I have had experience with my kids. I've had childhood illnesses that we've needed solutions for. We've had big things. We've had little things. We've had unexpected things. And I love that oils have covered so many of those right? I say it all the time, like big stuff, little stuff, and everything in between. I can find a natural solution at my fingertips just by reaching for my oils. So the number one question I get on a regular basis, especially I was a, a birth educator and doula for many, many years, and I'm in the process of kind of figuring out how I want to step into that role again. Uh, Thought I had it figured out, something shifted again, and that's okay. I'm good to, to be thinking on my toes and always adjusting. But number one question is, are oils safe for babies and kids? I get it all the time. What would be safe for my kid? She's this age. What would be safe for, you know, I have a baby. Oh my gosh, what should I do? And here's what I want to tell you guys. Yeah, they're safe. <laughs> yes, but 
But I have to throw in a but there. They are safe. If you are using doTERRA and you're using the oils wisely. Okay, here's the reason. So when we're using doTERRA, if you have been following along at all on my Instagram, you know I've been talking a lot about quality and purity. I would not touch non-doTERRA oils with a 10-foot pole to use on my babies. I would not put them into the air around my children. I would not put them on their skin, no matter how much coconut oil existed. Okay, if it's not doTERRA, it's not touching them. And here's the reason why, because I don't know what's in it. Unless I'm using doTERRA, there's no guaranteed quality. There's no guarantee on where it was sourced. There's no guarantee on the purity. There's no guarantee that what they say on the bottle is actually what's inside of it. Because no other company is standing up to doTERRA as far as quality and purity goes. No one else can make the same claims. No one else, you can't use anyone else's oils in the same manner. The other oils just simply, in my personal opinion, are not safe to be used around your children. Not even on them, but around them. And so I, for me, everything that I share with you tonight, I want you to know it applies to doTERRA only. So you can't apply this to your Young Living. You cannot apply this to your CVS oils. You cannot apply this to the free oils you got on Amazon with the diffuser. None of the things that I'm about to share with you will apply to any other brand, okay? I wanna share with you how to use the highest quality, the most pure oils that you can get your hands on and how you can use them safely on your little ones. We're gonna do it wisely though. And the reason I say that is because there are instructions on the bottles, believe it or not. So I'm gonna give you three quick tips on using your oils wisely on your kiddos. And the number one is to always dilute, okay? Here's what happens when we dilute. When you put an oil, let's start here. When you put an oil straight on your skin, it quickly absorbs, okay? It's very, very quick. Now, when you put it with a carrier oil, like a fractionated coconut oil, jojoba oil, you could use, grape seed oil, avocado oil, whatever it is that, that you fancy, you combine that with the essential oil and you slow down the absorption, okay? When we slow down the absorption on our skin, we, first of all, we don't waste as much because nothing, there's not as much that evaporates, okay? But when we slow down the absorption on our skin, we allow the body time to do what it needs to do with that essential oil rather than the quickness of a non-diluted essential oil. So I always recommend diluting with our little ones. Now, am I known to just reach over to a bottle of lavender, tip it over my finger and just dab it on the back of somebody? Of course I've done that, okay? I have 10 years of experience using essential oils. I know which ones don't cause a skin sensitivity with my kiddos. We have enough experience in our home, but when they were little and they were all brand new, and we didn't know who was going to have what kind of skin and all of these things. We always diluted with our littles. I just threw it all into a roller and we were good to go. Okay. So dilute, dilute, dilute. It's, it's simple. It's not a, it's not a hard thing. Okay. So you talk about dilution ratios. We could do all kinds of conversations about that. There are many ways to do it tonight. I want to give you foundations. And then in the next few nights, next few days on my Instagram, we're going to go talk about specific recipes and tips based on age ranges. So the recipes that I provide you in there will be specific to that specific age range. So always diluting. Okay. Um, it's going to help to slow down that absorption, help their body metabolize it appropriately for their size. And also it's going to help you avoid a skin sensitivity. Okay. Easy. Now keep in mind, if a sensitivity or you notice um, someone's skin gets a little red from using an essential oil, please remember it's not an allergy, okay? So it's actually not possible for us to be allergic to essential oils because there's no protein present in the chemical breakdown. But we can have sensitivity and little ones have more sensitive skin. So that's why we're gonna use caution in this way. So the number two thing that I wanna tell you is you can start low and you can start slow, okay? When making a roller, when adding oils to a diffuser, when putting them in the bathtub, whatever you're doing for your littles, 
You don't have to jump to 10 drops, okay? Baby steps, add a drop or two, okay? See how it goes. If you're feeling like maybe you wanna add a little more, then you can always add more. So when you're making your rollers, you know, start on the low end, you can always add more. When you're doing your diffuser, sure, you can do up to 10 drops in our, in our more popular diffusers, but like maybe start with three. And if that's enough, then you're good. You can always add more. So start low, start slow. You can always add more. The third little tip I wanna give you is to read your bottles. On every bottle, it tells you how you can use it. So it tells you if this is for internal use, if this is for topical use, if this can be diffused, okay? It's telling you the manner in which they suggest you use them. There are very few of our oils that are toxic, okay? Um, if used in a certain way. So deep blue is one. If you're watching the screen, it's pictured on, um, on my PowerPoint. Winter green is another. Those can cause you know, an undesirable effect if ingested. So those ones have a safety cap on them for our kiddos. Easy enough, right? It's gonna tell you how to use it. That's, that's all we have to do. So if we're reading on the bottle, we can read how to use it. We can start low and start slow and we can always dilute. Those are tips for using your oils wisely. Be smart guys, we just have to be smart about it. Okay. So when we're referring to using oils for a lifestyle of wellness, this is not the Band-Aid approach that we're used to with Western medicine. We have to remember that this approach that we're using is a foundation approach. It's a lifestyle approach. And so doTERRA has something called the Foundations of a Healthy Lifestyle. It's their wellness lifestyle pyramid, if you will. Uh, so the foundation of it is eating right. Then next is exercise and weight management, resting and managing stress, reducing toxic load. And then there's a little dotted line, right? These are all the things that we can control. And then beyond that, uh, the things that we then for our healthcare reach to, we go to informed self-care and we go to proactive medical care at the top. Think of it as these are all the things we can control and then we need to get help for it, okay? So this is the wellness lifestyle pyramid for an adult, the eating right, exercise and manage stress, or no, exercise and weight management, rest and manage stress, reduce toxic load, inform self-care. That's the process for an adult. But the foundation for wellness is the same even for our kids. So I wanna share with you how we utilize this in our home for our wellness lifestyle with our kiddos. So when we're talking about eating right, in our home, that looks a lot, a lot of whole, healthy foods. We do not follow the recommended food pyramid from the USDA or whoever is putting that out, okay? That is not, in our opinion, a healthy lifestyle. It still has things like sugar and an exorbitant amount of grains on there. And that's not really how we want to live our life, reaching for a lot of processed stuff. So in our home, our goal is the least amount of sugar, the least amount of processing. We want whole nutritious foods that our kids are getting. But I know as a mom, as a smart person who, who researches and learns I know that my food is going to have gaps. Even the food I grow in my garden, there are going to be gaps in that nutrition because our food is not as nutrient dense as it once was, as it used to be back when our grandparents and great grandparents were farming and gardening their own, right? So the salad that I harvest out of my yard is not as nutrient dense as it once potentially was, right? So there are gaps. No matter how healthy we eat, there are gaps. And so in our home, part of eating right also is supplementing as well. We know that there are vitamins and minerals and nutrients that are missing from our food, even if we ate 100% clean 100% of the time. And we don't, because I have real kids. This is real life, right? Like I just sent teenagers to summer camp, church camp, and I know for a fact that they ate some stuff that 
I probably didn't want a meeting. And guess what we're going to do? We're going to come home and we're going to detox and we're going to support their bodies. And we're going to make sure that they're getting really good quality stuff this week. Okay. It doesn't mean my kids never have a treat or that I, you know, freaked out about youth camp this week. It meant that, thank goodness, if we're talking the 80-20 rule, probably more like 90% of their diet is a really clean, really good. And so that little 10% that they got this week or that 20% or whatever, it all, it all balances out, right? And I know that they're putting good things in to fill in the gaps in the meantime. So we supplement, anyone in our house who can swallow a pill takes doTERRA's lifelong vitality supplements. Uh, there are also a kid's chewable version. Now I have some kids with some sensory issues. So we uh, use some gummies from another source, another brand um, to fill in the gaps for those kids who do not do a crunchy chewable um, and then, or who don't swallow a pill. So my goal as a mom is not to doTERRA eyes the whole family. My goal is to make sure my kids get what they need. So that's how we do it. Um, there are so many options for supplementing and all that. And it can be really overwhelming. So I trust doTERRA and I love that I can just be like, hey, go take your lifelong vitality, guys. <laughs> uh, so that's what we do at our house. That is part of the eating right foundation for us. Now, the next one on that wellness lifestyle pyramid is exercise. And at our house, we are very active. Um, I encourage you, if you guys are not active, People like get moving. It doesn't have to be intense. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to be an athlete, just move in some way every day. So we'll do things like go for walks as a family or um, we'll drop kids off at baseball practice and take a walk around the park. Or we'll go to the playground or it doesn't have to be hard and you don't have to overthink it. For us, uh, one of the things we added in this year, in addition to just exercise is doing it outside. Not like, like we would do, um, you know, like Cosmic Kids Yoga, or we would do just like family workouts or random things here and there. We have kids who are involved in sports as well. So they were, we're always moving and active. Um, but we added in a thousand hours outside this year. If you have not done that, it's super fun. Even if you don't meet your goal, the very fact that you aimed to get a thousand hours outdoors in a year, is pretty phenomenal. So we are, I mean, not even near where I thought we would be at this point, <laughs> but it has given us the goal of, hey, have you done your outside time yet today? You need to go get some outside hours. And it has gotten us moving more. It's gotten us out in nature more. It's grounding us emotionally more, which is always helpful. Um, and so it's been an incredible experience. I would highly encourage you to go check out a thousand hours outside. They have an Instagram, they have website, all the things. For us, this also includes recovery, muscle recovery. So we go on a hike or we go on a long walk. You better believe that deep blue stick is going to be, is going to be our friend. Um, our kids just went to youth camp and there were oils going with them, right? Because they're doing games, they're doing a lot of activity. Um, Rescuer is a roller that we love it is one of my favorites for muscle recovery for little ones and for just like, they're growing a lot, you know, they're growing a lot and their bodies need support. So we love Rescuer, we love the Deep Blue Stick and we love Copaiba in the roller. That's another one that we reach for a lot. Friendly reminder to you guys on Instagram, um, the PowerPoint that I'm showing on Facebook will be over here when I do the replay. I went too fast. Here we go. All right. The next in the wellness lifestyle pyramid is resting and managing stress. This is huge for our kids. This is huge. This is like, if I can teach my kids anything before they leave this home, I want to make sure they know how to handle their emotions, that they know how to support their spiritual growth, and that they know the value of resting, right? Because it's such a huge piece to adulthood that I had no idea. <laughs> I look back and I'm like, man, I did not value rest. I did not 
understand how to manage my emotions and stress. And I jumped right into adulthood as a mom. And I just did not have the skills that I needed to manage those things. And so how we handle that in our home, um, you know, I think that it all starts at the beginning of the day. Actually, it starts the night before when you go to bed at a decent hour. And I have had to really find value in resting and getting enough sleep at night. I am a night owl and I like being a night owl. Um, personally, I love being up late at night when nobody else is and it's kind of my, my time. But I've had to find value in making my sleep quality, right? So at our home, we take Serenity soft gels and anyone who can swallow a pill does the same. We diffuse in our diffusers at nighttime as well. We take adaptive capsules during the daytime to help with normal life stress. It has GABA in there as someone who um, has some neurological gaps, <laughs> some focus struggles. That GABA in adaptive is really incredible for my brain. Uh, we have some boys who struggle with the same thing and that adaptive is just so good for them. So we do a lot of diffusing during the daytime as well. We reach for our emotional oils, motivate, cheer, passion, give, console, peace, adaptive, uh, serenity, and balance. We reach for these on a regular basis to help support our emotions. It's one of the most incredible things I experienced early on, like 12 years ago, was how quickly we could shift mood and emotions and our response to the stress around us simply by smelling an essential oil. It affects our brain chemistry beyond what anyone understands. I could teach an entire class on how our brains love essential oils. Uh, but for time's sake, let me just tell you, we reach for the emotional mood oils probably more than anything else in our Another great for our like bathroom cabinet switchover, but I have to tell you like the number one thing we reach for oil scores for that because we need to support our emotions and it has been a stressful, stressful couple of years, guys. Our kids feel it. They feel it. And what better way to prepare them for adulthood than to know how to manage that stress, that everyday normal life stress that everyone deals with. Every single person deals with stuff like that. And we need to be able to prepare them with solutions that work and that aren't affecting their body in a negative way, okay? So at our home, that is how we handled that. The next tier is reducing toxins. Now guys, I grew up loving Bath and Body Works just like the rest of you, right? This, this 2000s, girl, there was a lot of cucumber melon sprayed up in here. <laughs> there was a lot of sweet pea sprayed. Country apple, anyone? That was like my early middle school days, sixth grade probably. I did a lot of damage. <laughs> Let me just say that. There was a lot of, my liver was overloaded. When I like figured this out, right? Started those getting rid of those toxins, started switching over to holistic products. When I started doing that, I learned how messed up my body was because I had already exposed myself to so many toxins when I was growing up. When I was in those formative years, my hormones are developing and all these things are happening. I'm like caking myself in gross makeup and spraying cucumber melon all over myself and probably lighting candles in my, in my tween room. And you know what I mean? Like when I look back and I realize how much junk I voluntarily exposed myself to, it's super unfortunate. And my body paid the price. And so now as a mom, I get to help my girls. I get to help my boys like, hey, maybe let's not use fragrance. Let's try some oils. Or in our home, you know, our skincare. I'm not using Neutrogena and Clinique, guys. I've got clean products without fragrance and without harsh chemicals. My kids have the greatest skin. 
And I know that I'm not putting extra burden on their liver and their, their detoxifying organs, right? Because it's clean. Their body knows exactly what to do with these botanical based products. Our shampoo and conditioner, our deodorant, the things that they're literally putting on their lymph nodes, they're clean, they're safe, they're not loaded and caked full of toxic crap. So when we're talking about reducing toxins, that starts with us mamas because we're the ones that are buying it. We're the ones that are buying it and putting it in front of them. We're the ones buying the bubble baths and the things when they're babies. We're the one buying the Johnson and Johnson junk. We're the, you know what I mean? We're the ones with the money. It's not like our six month old is going out and buying their own bath and body products. No, we are the ones making those purchases. And so we get to help our kids reduce their toxic load from day one by the things that we put on them and how we set them up within our home. Is your home a toxin-free environment? Probably not. Most of us have at least one or two areas. Even myself, I'm like, okay, hey, that's the one we're gonna address next, hairspray. In case anybody was wondering, I gotta figure out hairspray because I don't wanna, you know, all that <laughs> and be screwing up their hormone balance and all of the things, right? So producing toxins. This is an area that doTERRA is a huge help in though. I will say like, I don't have to search far because most of my solutions are actually within doTERRA, which is a huge benefit. Okay. And then informed self-care. So this is where we talk about our bathroom cabinet makeover. And when I did that reel earlier today, um, talking about, you know, nobody invited these guys, get out of here. We want to put clean solutions in our kids' hands. I want to, you know, reach for Serenity soft gels instead of a harmful sleep medication. I want to reach for deep blue stick instead of icy hot or Ben Gay or whatever that's full of petroleum based chemicals. Personally, I would rather not have my kids have hormone issues when they grow up. I would rather my kids not have fertility issues when they grow up. Okay. So it starts all the way to the back with what products are we putting in front of them so that as they grow, they know what to reach for and we're educating them along the way. So we are gonna really dive into these bathroom cabinet makeovers in the next few days. I'm gonna give you some essential oil recipes first, starting uh, probably tonight when I get off of this because I'm feeling, feeling like it. Um, and tomorrow and probably Sunday as well. And then next week, we're gonna dive into some bathroom cabinet makeovers and really get those low tox switchovers going for you guys. And that's our informed self-care, right? We're being informed, we're caring for our bodies, um, in a healthy way without putting more burden on our detoxifying parts of our body. And then proactive medical care comes next. That's where we're gonna go to our chiropractor. That's where we're gonna re you know, give a call to our midwife for either well woman care or whatever. You're gonna, we're gonna go do whatever dental checkups we feel like are important for us. This is our proactive medical care or you know, like I mentioned today, like I'm not opposed to consulting with, with our family doctor or with our chiropractor on a health concern. I'm not opposed to consulting with a functional medicine doctor. For us, I just don't have to do that very often. However, last year, you better believe when I was in the middle of a health crisis, had mold exposure and histamine intolerance and all this stuff happening at one time, bacterial bonanza happening in my body. You better believe I consulted with some people. <laughs> because I needed help, right? Like this was outside of my realm of expertise. This is outside of normal. And I had to reach outside. And that's where having a team comes in so that when you have a health concern, you can reach for that. So using oils on our kids doesn't mean we never go to the doctor. In my situation, I found that I don't need to very often. I can usually find what I need at my fingertips on that oil shelf over there. It's an incredibly empowering situation. I love that in the middle of the night, if a kid has, you know, that barky cough that I know what to do. We haven't had to go get breathing treatments in years, years, 12, actually. I remember the last time we had to do it. I love that it has just given me everything that I need to care for my children. And I'm not reliant on many other people 
honestly. It's such freedom for us. It has been such a freeing, amazing experience to teach myself how to care for my children, to teach myself how to how to listen to their body, to how to read their body, not the temperature on the thermometer. Guys, that is like true connectedness with our kiddos, right? That's the, that's the empowerment that I wanna, wanna be a part of. I don't need any of this other kind of female empowerment. The kind that I need right now is to be able to connect with my kids and prepare them for the future. And what oils have given me is a tool to do just that, to care for the children that God has given me and to prepare them, give them tools to prepare them for the rest of their lives. And I love that it's not putting additional burden on anybody's body. So that's it. That is our oils for babies and kids foundation part one chat. It starts with that foundation of a wellness lifestyle. So what I would love for you to do is be watching my Instagram. Uh, some of the stuff gets pushed over to Facebook, but not all of it will. And what we're going to do is I'm going to be doing tips, tricks, and recipes for the next few days for babies and kids of all ages. So we'll break it down by age groupings and hopefully this give you some ideas on how you could be using oils for your littles. So I hope this was helpful. I hope it wasn't too long. It's all good. You can come back and rewatch. I'm gonna have the replay happening um, I'll, as soon as I pull it down off of Zoom here and then it'll be over on, uh, on Instagram. So that's it guys. Have a great night. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you next time.